In Matthew chapter 1, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 16, look at verse number 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign for, from heaven. Right? So here comes the religious crowd to Jesus. Show us a sign from heaven. Show us some proof. Show us some evidence. Look how Jesus answered. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites, ye, can, ye discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. And Jesus is answering here. They're saying, show us a sign from God Almighty. Show us a sign from heaven where God's throne is. Show us a spiritual sign. And He says, hey, you can see physical signs. Look what He's saying here. In fact, actually, turn to Luke chapter 12. They ask for a sign from God the Father in heaven, and He tells them, you're able to judge the earthly sky, the earthly heaven. But you can't judge the spiritual signs from God, the spiritual things from heaven. He tells them that you cannot discern the signs of the times. He's telling the religious crowd, you cannot judge spiritual things. You cannot judge spiritual things. And, you know, the Bible says that he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yeah. As a Christian, we should mature to the point where we can make good decisions. Where we can discern the difference between good and evil, right and wrong, knowing when and how to make a decision, and we need to base it on spiritual things. Amen. And frankly, today there's a lot of Christians that lack discernment. Right. They totally lack discernment. Yeah. And it's a shame they can't judge the smallest of matters. Right. And today I'm talking about how to develop discernment. Developing discernment in your Christian life, being able to judge so you can understand the signs of the times. In Luke 16, Jesus tells us that the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. You're, you're in Luke 12, stay there. Jesus was saying there that there are people in this world that have more wisdom than some Christians. And let me tell you, you should not be one of those Christians. If you lack judgment, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, which is discernment, if you lack those things and you can't discern to make a right decision, the Bible, there's a problem. According to the Bible, there's a problem. Your spiritual man should be strong enough that you know that you can depend on the Lord. You can ask the Lord for all things and He will reveal things to you. He will help things. But you know, today we've got a bunch of Christians that are spiritually dead. Yeah. They walk around, they don't know what they're doing, they don't know where they're at, they don't know what the next step is, they're not, they have no foresight, they're not thinking about what they should be doing, or where they should be going, or where they want their family to go, they don't have goals in life, yeah. they can't even get a, an average ac task accomplished, and, and I mean, they, they act like a dumb blonde, for lack of a better phrase, right? A lot of Christians act like a dumb, and no offense if you're blonde, not all blondes are dumb, but... A lot of Christians really do act like they have no discernment whatsoever. They act just like they're an idiot. And, you know, that's not right according to the Bible. And we have to change it. We have to be willing to look at our own faults and say, okay, Lord, I want to fix this. Okay, Lord, I want to grow. I want to get better. I want understanding. Now, look, you're in Luke chapter 12. Look at verse 54. You know, the idea here is I want to help willfully ignorant Christians to recognize their problem so they're not ripped apart by the devil. They're not totally distracted by the cares of the world. So they can get their stuff together and function in life. It'd be a, it's a shame when a Christian doesn't make a good decision. When they don't have enough judgment, enough discernment to see the problem that's right in front of their face. Look at Luke 12 verse 54. This is a parallel to what we read earlier in Matthew 16. And he said unto the people, when you see a cloud rise out of the west, and straightway ye say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, there will be heat, and so it cometh to pass. Again, he's talking about the physical sky, the physical heavens. You're able to see that, and you know what's going on. But look, he's bringing it back to a spiritual issue. Verse 56, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it that ye do not discern this time. Sometimes they have earthly wisdom, but not so much 
spiritual wisdom. And Jesus was making the point like this time was prophesied. You think of all the prophecies that had been fulfilled up to the point of Jesus standing in front of them and saying it. I mean, the, the babies being killed, the, the, the stars, the, the, I mean, just all these miraculous things, things come into a point where they're like, why are these things happening? Why is John the Baptist? Why is the king? Go, why is Rome? And, and, and there's, hey, something must be happening. And then lo and behold, God's standing before them and they don't have any discernment. Well, why don't you show us a sign in the sky? And he say, you've seen the signs. And of course, he goes on and he tells them, hey, you'll see the sign of Jonah. You'll see the Son of Man. The Son of Man that will come back and rule the earth. You're going to see Him be put to death. You're going to see Him come back to life. And look what he says in verse 57. Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? What is discernment? It's to judge. It is to judge. And sometimes as Christians, we make dumb decisions. And that's okay. You know, the Bible says that a righteous man, he'll fall seven times. You know, and he gets back up. And that's good. That's what it ought to be. But you need to have the judgment to say, I just fell. And you need to have the judgment to seek it of the Lord to get back up. It's, good. it's up to us. I mean, because without spiritual discernment, you cannot judge what is right. Yeah. Why, why? How come I can't pay my bills? Well, maybe there's something you didn't judge right on. Maybe you overextended yourself. Well, how come my marriage isn't working right? Maybe it's because you're not judging righteously. Maybe it's because you're not treating your spouse like you ought to. Maybe you're not investing the time in your children like you should. The Bible gives us instruction on all manner of things in life, and if you ignore it, you will end up being a parable and a byword. And God doesn't want that. He wants us to grow as Christians. He wants us to have the discernment, so much discernment and wisdom that the world will come to us and say, hey, I want your opinion. Right. It's obvious you've got some wisdom. You have some discernment. You can make a judgment call. I want to hear what you have to say. Look, for, turn to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So discernment is to judge what is right. And to have the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of what is wrong also. Understanding both sides of the ledger. And I want to help you develop this spiritual discernment. You know, it's kind of similar to street smarts. You know, there are certain people in here that I don't care what dark alley, I, I know. And it's not about whether they're packing or not. I just feel like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll roll down a dark alley with this guy. Because whatever happens, he's probably ready. Other guys, I'd say, no, get behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Stay back. Right? <laughs> And look, and I'm not talking about your physical strength. I'm talking about like a mental strength. But really it's spiritual is what I'm getting at here, right? What's your spiritual street smart like? Come on. You know what I mean? Because we go into some pretty crazy places doing some soul winning. Yeah. Knocking doors. Talking to, you know, some people. I mean, when you go into an area and you're after the, the tender hearts of people that know they need the Lord and they're surrounded by reprobates. They're surrounded by perverts and pedophiles and all manner of weird people, and you go in there, hey, that's all right, I'm going to get the innocent. I don't, I don't worry about the weirdos. They can't touch me. I'm in God's will. And we need to grow in our spiritual discernment because even when situations arise, you need to have the right understanding and knowing what to do. Knowing what to say. Being, having that right word at the right time. And when, when Jesus talked about understanding the times, I want you to consider your own time. What do you do with your time? Do you discern, do you have good judgment about what you do with your time? Do you get the end of a project and figure, oh man, I lost a whole hour. I need more time. I, I ran out of time. I mean, because we shouldn't be that way in life. We should be considering the time. I mean, the days are evil, right? The, the day of the Lord is at hand. God may come back and find us not soul winning, not working as a church, not raising our family. And we'll see the signs. But will we be ready? When we see these signs, will we discern it? Because Jesus showed them huge signs and they couldn't even understand the time. They had no idea what to do. In 1 Chronicles, um, 1 Corinthians 12, 32, he says, And the children of Issachar, it is Chronicles, I'm sorry, stay where you're at in 1 Chronicles 2. 1 Corinthians 2. In 1 Chronicles 12, 32, it says, And the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do. Remember what Jesus said, how is it you, you, don't have, you can't discern the time. Back then with Issachar, they were one tribe, one out of twelve. They were a small tribe, and they were the only ones that had understanding to know what the nation needed to do. Yeah. And I believe in America, there's very few people that spiritually speaking, they know what we need to do yeah. as a country. 
as a church, right? What is it we need to do? And I believe, I believe that God is raising up more men and women, people that want to do what God says, but we are surrounded by people that have no spiritual discernment. And we don't need to acquiesce to their way. We don't need to give in to the peer pressure. We need to be willing to take a stand and say, hey, this is what God said. I'm going to make a judgment call. I don't care whether you like it or not. I know what God said, and I'm going to stand behind it. I understand it, and now I'm going to tell you. That's discernment, yeah. is making that judgment call. Yeah, that's right. Now look, you're in 1 Corinthians 2. Look at verse number 14. He says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now here he's talking about, this is sort of a, a comparison of the foolish and the wise. The natural man is going to make mistakes. Even as a Christian, you, if you walk in the flesh, you are being foolish. You will make spiritual mistakes. But here he has this wise discerner, and he says that the natural can't know it. They don't understand. They can't even perceive what's going on. These things are spiritually discerned. So how did this spiritual man, how did he learn to discern these things? Back up a few verses. Go to verse number 11. For what man knoweth the things of, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. So he's talking about learning. He's talking about knowledge being a key here. Understanding why people do what they do. Which is, hey, understanding why you do what you do. Are you analyzing yourself? Look at verse 12. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given us of God. So he says that we need to know. Okay, so knowledge is a key. Understanding what God has for us. And where does our knowledge come from? The Bible. That's right, the Bible. Look what he says in verse 13. He says they're freely given, which things also we speak, not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So knowing what the Word of God has taught you you have to have the discernment to teach that to somebody else. Amen. You don't go out and try to get somebody saved by telling them about your experience. Let me tell you about something I learned on, on job site. Let me tell you about my, my fleshly knowledge. It's going to help you understand God. Eh, no, not really. Yeah. You know, Spiritual things need to be compared to spiritual things. Right. And this knowledge only comes from God. It comes from the Word of God. Anything else is compared to foolishness. Look at the next verse. But the natural man, that's the fool, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Right? A, a fool thinks the Bible is foolishness. Right. Somebody that's truly a fool would hear the Bible, look at them, ah, I don't have time, I don't, I don't. that's silly, that's silly to me. Yeah, you're a fool. Because right. you don't understand the power of God. Look at verse 15, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things including yourself. He that is spiritual judges himself is willing to hold himself up to this standard. Right? This isn't saying if you're spiritual, you go around with your Bible hitting people on the head telling them how they ought to live. You start by looking in the mirror. You judge yourself. Judgment must begin at the house of God. We must judge ourselves so that we won't be judged of God. And if we do that, we're righteous in God's eyes. And the fact that we decide to live our lives different from the world, that in itself will judge the world. They will look at you and say, well, how come things are working for you? Well, I'm just obeying God. Yeah, but it doesn't look like you're having fun. Hey, you don't know what true joy is. You do not understand true joy until you're saved. Look what he says here, verse 15. He that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. If you have discernment, you will judge, which means you will obey the Word of God. You will do it. You're going to apply it to your own life. If you're not applying the Word of God, you've failed. If you're not reading the Word of God, you have failed. That's right. You have to understand what God has for you. Look at verse 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that He may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Now turn to Hebrews chapter 5. So listen, don't be a foolish Christian. Don't reject the instruction of the Word of God. 
We need to be able to judge all things according to the wisdom of the Bible. And there's certain steps that I believe the Lord reveals to us, and most Christians have failed. They are, they are a total deadbeat. They don't care what the Bible says. They're saved and nuts to everything else. Forget about living righteously. Forget about reading the Bible. It's, it's convenient to open it when it's convenient. Otherwise, it's not really a priority. If you don't understand the Bible, if you don't understand the basic doctrines of the Bible, then you're, you're a baby Christian, the Bible calls us. Right. And nobody wants to be called a baby. I mean, or worse yet, a foolish Christian. Uh -oh. Who wants to be a foolish Christian? Look, and most Christians can't discern the things on the earth. Plain and simple. Most people that are Christian, they don't understand because they're not spiritual. They're totally not spiritual. You know, and it's, it's sort of sad because here in Florida, we just had another one of these school shootings, right? We've got some kid that goes into a school with a gun, kills a bunch of people, right? And, it, and the guy himself says that he's demon-possessed. Wow. He literally tells people, I've got devils, they're in my head, they're telling me what to do. This kid's a product of the military industrial complex, yeah. of the medical industrial complex. Yeah, there's a conspiracy to mess up his head. The devil's at the top of this conspiracy, and he was successful. Right. Now look, I don't know all the details of this, but I know this much. The guy claims, I've got devils. And the world says, no, 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 you don't have devils. You just need more drugs. Uh, hey, is it devils or is it drugs? What is it? Yeah. The world doesn't have spiritual discernment, but we as Christians do. That's right. We look at that and we say, well, yeah, the kid's lost his mind. Right. The kid's on drugs. The, the kid has a devil whispering in his ear. Right. No wonder, all bets are off. He can do all manner of harm to people. Yeah. And what he did is so wicked. And you know, people, oh, well, gun control, that'll fix it. Gun control is the solution to school violence. Well, number one, we shouldn't have public schools. Right. Period. Number one, we shouldn't have public schools. But really, I believe drug control is the solution. I believe mind control. You control your own mind, turn the TV off. Quit letting that crap come into your mind and infect you. Quit letting the world's music come in your ears and tell you what's acceptable, how to act, how to live. Keep it out of your face. Have a little control of your own body and prevent this stuff from coming into your life. I believe that's the answer. Not gun control. Yeah. Brother Joe just preached about gun control, gun safety in the church. And he used scripture to show you how you should defend your family. Right. Yeah. You should be prepared, and yet we trust the Lord for safety. Right. We trust God because we have His Holy Spirit. He will provide us and put a hedge of protection around us. And yet, we should be vigilant. We should be ready. We should defend the innocent. What happened down there is just sad. It's a terrible situation. It's wicked. And the world doesn't understand why. And this kid told him, I've got devils. Oh, well, no, devils aren't real. Let's get the medical handbook and find out. <laughs> if you guys haven't watched that documentary, Demon Possession, watch it. It deals with those, those things. And it shows you that there is a spiritual sickness in America. Yeah, and God's the only answer. It's not drugs. The devils are the problem. Look, you're in Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 11. He says, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, Seeing ye are dull of hearing. Right? Here's the fool. Hey man, I got something you need to hear. This is going to help you out. You'll be smarter if you hear it. What? What was that? <laughs> hey, pay attention. I'm over here. Look up here. Hey, pay attention. You need to read the Bible. Huh? What? What? I mean, are you walking around in a daze? Are you walking around like somebody hit you in the head and you're suffering from, from trauma? What? Right? But spiritually, this is most Christians in America. That's right. Yeah. They want to go see a rock band at their so-called church. That I mean, the gospel's wrong, the doctrine's wrong, the Bible's wrong, they got a wrong spirit, and they're still calling it a church that doesn't make any sense. That's right. And I believe that there are saved people in those wicked, watered-down, wannabe churches. we got to pull them out. Right. we got to wake them up. Yeah. Hey, if you're really saved, get on fire for God. Amen. God wants you to be able to preach the gospel. God right. wants you to understand what the Bible says and be able to apply it. Right. And have enough discernment to teach others also. Have enough discernment to make a judgment call. Yes or no. Most Christians can't make a judgment call. They, they can't even function. Look at verse 12. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Now look, the oracles of God is the Bible. He says, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. 
So here he's given this spiritual analogy. The first principles, the basics of Christianity. He's saying there are many Christians. I'm trying to tell you this, but you're being a fool. You're yeah. not listening. You can't make decisions. And because of it, I have to teach you again. It should be that you should be able to stand up and teach these things. Instead, here we are. We're going back over the basics again. We had to re hit the reset again. Are you being a good judge of your time? Investing your time in spiritual things? Investing in the learning of the wisdom and knowledge of the Lord so you can make judgment calls? Are you investing in earthly things? Well, I'm learning to study the sky so I can see when it's red or when there's a cloud, when it's going to rain, when it's going to be hot. Uh, I think Jesus warned about that, yeah, right. right? Now look, I understand. When you have an occupation, you need to study and be, be good at your occupation. You need to study to be good in your role in your family. Whether, whether you're a father, or a husband, a wife, a mother, a child, you have a role that you need to fulfill. And you ought to study to get better at that. But you can't just say, well, I'm only doing this. I can't grow as a Christian right now. right? And there are a lot of Christians that, that frankly, they suffer in all areas because of a lack of spiritual discernment. Look at verse 13. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So how do we discern good and evil? How do we grow this spiritual man? It says by reason of use. If you're not reading your Bible, if you're not studying doctrine for yourself, then you don't know how to use it. You don't have that discernment to see the difference. It says you're unskillful. It's like you're a baby. Now turn to Proverbs chapter 1. You have to use the word to get wisdom from it. It's good. And you think about it, like, like Brother Theo and I were having a conversation one time about computer stuff. And we're nerds, okay? And that's a good, that's a good thing. We're not geeks, we're nerds. There's a difference. <laughs> but if Brother Theo and I were standing here talking about motherboard architecture, computer processors, and you walked up and you have no clue about anything computers, and you just try to get it, work your way into the conversation, you're going to kind of look like a fool. Right. Like we know you don't know what you're talking about. Well, guess what? There are Christians that are like this. Two men are talking about the Bible, and they, what are you talking about? What do you mean? What? We're supposed to do what? You know, <laughs> like a duck looking for its mama. Wait, what? I got to do what? What's the Bible say? And look, we ought not to be a baby. We ought not to be somebody that lacks spiritual discernment. And so many of the basics of Christianity just go right over the heads of most Christians. And they have their pet topic, or they can talk about certain things, but they've stopped right there. They don't ever go deep enough to say, I want to search certain things out for myself. I want the answer for myself. And you know, when Jonah spared Nineveh, or I'm sorry, when, when Jonah preached to Nineveh, God spared Nineveh. At the end of that story, God said that He, he spared it because there was 120,000 people that could not discern between their left hand and their right. Now, there's only a few people in here that would meet that qualification. Children. A child, which, which, which one's left? What? Right? Which was left? Which is right? They don't know, right? And when God is saying, you're like this baby, they can't even tell you what's up, what's down, what's left, what's right. Only spiritually speaking, you're like a baby that refuses to grow. And that's not how we ought to be. We, are, we should not be a bunch of babes. We need to be ready to grow. We need to be ready to sacrifice our time. Invest it in things that matter. Look, in Hebrews 4, he says, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing, dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible can discern the thoughts and intentions of your heart. The Bible can discern the difference between the soul and the spirit. Can you give me what's the difference in the soul and the spirit? But hey, not without this, right? This is what the Bible's saying. And the Bible will help teach you, it will help you judge the difference between what's fleshly and what's spiritual. And, and a lot of Christians, the lines are blurred, they've overlapped, and you're not really sure what's what, what matters, what's important. And too many times I think Christians get worried about 
pointing at the world learning of the world so they can point at it and say well look how crazy it's getting well look at the news did you hear the latest thing hey did you hear did you hear the oldest thing Come on. right did you hear the most important thing i got the latest thing for you it's get in it for yourself study it for yourself let god reveal something to you let god help you discover things look in hosea 4 he says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee as a Christian, if you find yourself making mistakes constantly, you need to just stop and say, okay, God, what am I doing wrong? You need to seriously talk to your Creator and say, Lord, why am I failing? Why am I not being a success? Because the Bible says it's a lack of knowledge on your part. He's offered you knowledge. You've rejected it. Therefore, God is letting you fall on your face. You know, here in Proverbs, where you're at, Proverbs chapter 1, where it says that wisdom crieth without. Wisdom is being freely offered to you. Hey, God is hollering. You want to be smarter? You want to be wiser? You want to be able to make judgment calls? Will you answer that call? Look at verse 23. He says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my Spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. When you, re when you recognize that you're not moving in the right direction, you say, okay, Lord, I'm turning. I'm going to get this right. I'm going to get closer to you. God will begin to pour out His Spirit on you, and you'll have wisdom right. that will exceed your flesh. Look at verse 24. Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded. God's holding out the Bible. God, here you go. I got some wisdom. Did you want to be smarter? Here you go. Oh, I don't, I don't have time for that. Oh, God, I don't have time for that. I'm watching this new conspiracy video. Oh, God, oh, don't you know there's a football game on? I don't have time for that. God's saying, hey, I want you to take this wisdom. I want you to get it in your mind. I want you to get it in your heart, and you will be blessed. But too many Christians just totally reject it. And listen, I'm going to give you the easy answer to having more wisdom. This is the simplest thing. If you take nothing else away from today, I want you to take this. Read the book of Proverbs. There's so much wisdom in the book of Proverbs. Whatever the date is, what today's the 18th, go to Proverbs 18. Read it. What's it take? Two minutes? Yep. But here's an extra key. Do this every day. Yep. And as you go through the month, so say you do it today and you find something at 18, find a verse that sticks out to you. Before you start, ask God, Lord, show me something today. Help me learn something. You find that verse. I want you to physically write it down. I want you to write it down two or three times. I want you to take that verse with you. I want you to put it on a piece of paper and take it with you through your day. And when you find yourself idle, standing in line at a grocery store, whatever, pull it out. Read it. When you find yourself with downtime, read it. Learn it. Memorize it. Say it back to yourself. Apply it. God will give you wisdom that will last for generations if you will just invest the time in memorizing one verse a day out of Proverbs but especially reading one chapter a day. This is, this is less than the least. Listen, as a Christian, we ought to be reading a lot more. We ought to be spending a lot of time in the Bible. Yep. But if you, if you would at least do this, commit to this one thing, and say, I'm going to read Proverbs, I'm going to find that one verse, and next month on the 18th, do a different verse. Find a different verse to focus on. And I'm sure the Lord's Spirit will reveal that to you and guide you to a different verse. Look at verse 28. Then shall they call on me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. That's you standing. God's saying, it's time for a judgment call. And you're like, oh, this situation. I, I saw this in Proverbs or something. I don't remember. I, I decided not to read it. And you're not ready. There's wisdom. Here it is. Oh, I don't have any. Look at verse 29. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Turn to James chapter 1. If you don't study the Bible for yourself, you will make bad decisions. That's decisions right. that are preventable. And listen, it's going to be evident. If you begin pouring yourself into the Bible and studying these things out, it'll be obvious to everyone. Well, you will just become a smarter person. I believe this is a promise from God. Again, Hosea, he says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will reject thee. You don't want to be rejected of God and make bad decisions. And well, what if you say, okay, well, that's me. I, you know what? I've been making bad decisions. You know what, Brother Fannin? I'm that fool that you're talking about. 
I'm, I'm glad you I'm glad you asked. What can we do now, right? How can you move forward? I'm glad that you're acknowledging that you make bad decisions. I do too. We all do. But if you're sitting here saying, no, yeah, yeah, I agree with everything you're saying, but that's not me, well, then you got a problem, right? We all have room to grow. We all have things we need to get better at. We all need to pay attention more to our time, to the responsibilities we've been given. If you're slacking in your responsibilities, God's not happy with you. He wants you to be the best at everything you put your hand to do. Give Him glory in your time. So how can we get wisdom to have discernment? Number one, I believe, is to ask God. Very simple. Ask God. He wants you to have it. And this is something that throughout your day, throughout your time and in your week, you need to just, when something happens, you need to be talking with God. In James 1, where you're at, look at verse number 5. If any of you lack wisdom... Well, we talked about Hosea 4 in lacking knowledge. Look what he says here. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. If you know of somebody that's a Christian and they don't have wisdom, the one reason they don't have wisdom is because they refuse to ask God. It's clear. He gives it to everyone that asks Him, that's saved. And he gives it liberally. He gives a lot of it. And if you're like just birds out, you know, wings out there flapping, you don't know what's going on in the world, hey, it's because you're not asking God for wisdom. You're not taking it serious. He's made a promise to you. Look at verse 6. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. You know what wavering is? Well, God, if you don't mind, if you have time, can you give me a little bit? Help me sort it. No, it's like, God, you made a promise. I'm taking you up on your word. God, I need some wisdom. Yeah. Lord, please give me as much as you can. I need some help here, God. Coming with boldness, asking God, asking in faith. Lord, I know you're going to give it to me because you've already promised. Having that confidence that he will give it to you. Look at verse 7. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. You come to the Lord wavering, you're going to get wavering right back. Oh yeah? You'll get as much as your faith will allow you to have. Have some big faith. Have some bold faith. Amen. Look, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The Bible says that we should be praying without ceasing. And he's saying here we should be asking for wisdom. And whether it's, again, in the workplace, in your family, just your daily walk, you need to be asking God for every decision. And I mean just, Lord, should I turn here or should I keep going? Yeah. Oh, come on, not on that. You're not really going to ask God for help driving, are you? Yeah, everything. I need God's help in everything. And the more that you're willing to just throw, hey, you know what? I'm a fool. I'm that fool that you warned about. I need your help, God. I need your wisdom. The more that you're willing to just humble yourself, God will use you. God uses men that are willing to do basic things to do great things for Him. And we got a lot of guys around here that I believe that, that the Lord is using in mighty ways out soul winning. And there are many more things God can do with you. But you have to come to the point and say, you know what, Lord, I'm, I might be that fool. I might be that guy that can't seem to get his stuff together. Lord, what can I do? Lord, please give me help. Give me discernment. Help me to be able to make judgment calls. In Colossians 1.9, he says, For this calls also since the day that we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and desire that ye might be filled with knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. My prayer for you, for you, for you, for you, for all of you, is that your spiritual understanding would be increased. Amen. That we as a church body, each individual would begin to grow and make better decisions. Business decisions, work decisions, family decisions. But we're all, I mean, I know these are physical things, but it comes down to the spirit. What are we doing in our spirit? The Bible says we need to read for ourselves. That's the final answer is read the Bible. If you're not doing this and life is all messed up and you fall on your face and things aren't working, then you need to just say, okay, you know what? It's right here. This is, this is where I'm making the mistake. This is what I'm lacking in. This is what I'm not obeying in. Colossians 3 says, Let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. We're commanded to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And He tells us how? By reading the Bible. 
How does that add up? This is just a book. These are just words, right? But God's Holy Spirit wrote this, and God's Holy Spirit is in you, and the more that you get this in here, the more you will start making better decisions. You'll be a dependable person. And you know, as Christians, again, we should not be undependable. We shouldn't be that guy at work where they say, well, we can't trust him with this. Just give him that menial task. We need, we need to be wise enough to say, i got to get better. I can tell a difference. Those guys know what they're doing, and I don't. I'm just, I'm just the gopher. I don't want to be the gopher anymore. So how do you fix it? Start with this. Start with this. Be praying to God. God, give me the wisdom. Give me the insight. Help me to understand things. And then all of a sudden, God will help you become more wise. In John 14, He says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in My name, He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Whatsoever you have read, God's Spirit will bring it back. John 16, He says, The Spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. That Holy Spirit is your guide. That is God working through you if you allow Him. Now look, you're in 1 Corinthians 12. We're going to look at the gifts the Bible says that we should covet earnestly the best gifts. And discernment is a gift. We're going to look at it in context. And I believe that as with all gifts from God, that sometimes we have, some guys have more of certain things, other people have less of certain things, but I believe that God wants us to desire to increase in all of our gifts. Yeah, that's good. I don't want you to look at, well, this guy has the gift of prophecy and I just have, a, what, a word of knowledge? I guess I'm stuck with that. No, as long as you have that mentality, you are. Yeah. If you say, God, you say covet the, the best gifts. Man, I want to prophesy. I want to preach. I want some wisdom. I want all these gifts that are available to me. God, I want you to grow me. Look at verse number 4. He says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences in administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is, it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So what he's saying is, if you're saved, God has given you something. Do you want more? It's up to you. It's up to you. God's not just going to force a bunch of gifts on you so you can sit at home and watch TV. Sit like a bump on a log and never use it. Don't be envious of other people's gifts because you're lacking if you're not doing anything to increase right. yourself. Look what he says, verse 8. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit. You know, I believe there are some people that maybe they just have faith. Hey, what's your spiritual gift? Well, I have some faith, right? There's other people you can say, man, they have great faith. I'm encouraged by their faith. Faith itself is a gift. Yes. Once you're saved, you need to increase in trusting the Lord for things. Look what he says. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. And to another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. Now prophecy is preaching. To another discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. Right? And this is what we're talking about this morning is being able to discern what's going on. Understand the times. Making a judgment call. Go ahead, turn to Romans chapter 12. You know, it's funny because over the years, I've met a lot of Pentecostals that boast, well, I, I have the gift of discernment. And they're actually a fool. Right. And some of the people that like to brag about having discernment actually have the least. Right. Why? Because they're not saved. They don't have spiritual discernment. Yeah. Their idea, oh, well, this guy speaks in tongues, and he, I know he's faking it, so I don't do that. And this lady does interpretation, and she's faking it. I'll say I have, I have discernment. No, you don't. That means you go around saying, yeah, that was right. You know what I mean? No, that's not what the Bible is teaching here. The Bible is saying that God gives some people, some Christians, the ability to discern the spirit of another man. Yep. The spirit, when, it, when, you're, when there's influence from devils, from an outside source. And listen, as Christians, this is available to you. Yes. This is available to you. That's right. If you would grow in your spirit, you would be able to discern what's really going on. God wants you to ask Him for more spiritual talent. He wants you to search for it like hid treasure. If I told you there was an ounce of gold in your backyard, would you go dig up your yard? Yeah. 
If I told you that in the Bible was a guarantee you'll be a smarter person if you would just read it, would you actually crack it open in the morning? Think about it. Look, you're in Romans chapter 12. Look at verse number 6. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy, according to the proportion of faith. You men that say, well, I don't know if I can get up there and preach a sermon with you guys on men's preach tonight. Well, according to this, it's a lack of faith. If you would say, Lord, give me more faith so that I can prophesy, God would answer that. Get up there and do it. Look at verse 7. Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering. Which, by the way, ministering means serving. Notice he says wait. Right? You used to be like a five-star waiter. Lord, what can I do for you? God, what do you need me to do? Oh, go help this person. Go talk to this person. Go answer this prayer. Go, go pray for this person. That's ministering. Most people that walk around bragging of their ministry, it's them trying to collect money. Yeah. And it's sad what Christianity has become, but we have to fix this by getting back to what God teaches. Look what he says. Or he that teacheth on teaching. How many of these do you want? You want to just settle for one gift? Well, God, it's clear you've made me a teacher, but I'll stop there. I, won't, I don't need more faith. I don't want to prophesy. I don't want to be able to discern what's going on in the times. It's up to you. It's our choice. Look at verse 8. He that exhorteth on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, and he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Mercy, you know, hey, we need to be, we need some more mercy in here. We need to cut each other some slack. We need to be cheerful about it. Well, I forgave him, but man, you know, he just gets me. Hey, that's not being cheerful in your mercy. That's saying, you know what? I've been forgiven of so much, I'm going to forgive my brother of a little bit. I'm going to pretend like it didn't happen because I love him and I love my church. Yeah. Look what he says. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Yeah. Wait a minute. Abhor means to hate. Yeah. He's saying, no fake love. Make sure you hate evil. Yeah. Right. You understand the Bible commands us to hate? Yeah. I am so sick and tired of hearing fake Christians, spiritually dead Christians, try to tell me, oh, you can't hate. Doll, you can't hate anything. The Bible commands me to hate evil right here. Right. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Amen. To cleave to good means you've got to reject the evil. You've got to hate the wickedness. You've got to focus on what's right. You've got to love without dissimulation. Don't let it be fake. Amen. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. Now turn to Ecclesiastes 8 and we'll end there. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes, mind you, is after Proverbs. And I believe Proverbs that hears all this wisdom and then Ecclesiastes just kind of puts the, the icing on the cake for us. There's a lot of wisdom in it. So we need to show love and forgiveness to each other and God will bless us with more gifts. I do believe that if you're, if you're not forgiving your brother, you're not loving your brother as you ought to, why, how dare you go ask God for more spiritual gifts if you're not going to use the basics. In Ezekiel 44, he says... And they shall teach My people the difference between the holy and the profane and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. This is the problem with Christians today. They cannot discern between the clean and the unclean. Well, it's okay to go in this establishment. Well, you know, I, you know, I just happened to stop by with my friends and they're over here doing this thing. They're smoking a joint. They're drinking. It's not like I'm doing it. Hey, there's clean and unclean. There's holy and unholy. We need to make judgment calls. We need to stand up for what's righteous. We need to warn people about the damaging effects of living in the flesh, of letting the devil take control of your mind. There you go. He says, and in controversy they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my judgments. Here in Ezekiel, what he's talking about, he says, teach people to judge between good and evil, clean and unclean, so that you can stand in judgment. That doesn't mean standing over somebody judgmentally. That means, he says, in controversy, a situation happens, somebody has to stand up and say what's right. That's right. Yeah. Somebody has to stand up and say, thus saith the Lord, because they do it according to my judgments. They do it according to the Bible. And if you don't know the Bible, if you don't know God's judgment, how can you end controversy? You can't. You've got to have that wisdom. So how, when Jesus warned, He said, you cannot discern the signs of the time. You're in Ecclesiastes 8. Look at verse number 5. It says, Who keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. Listen, 
and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. How do you know when you're a wise man? Maybe when God reveals it to you that you're accurately judging your time. You're accurately judging the signs of the times, but also, you're, you're, you know, the, look, judgment, time, discernment, it all goes together. And this goes with what we started with, what Jesus talked about, that you, you can discern the sky, but you can't discern or judge the signs of the time. Go back a few verses. Look at verse number one in this chapter. It says, Who is as the wise man? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Right? Who's wise enough to hear a proverb and say, Oh, I know what that means. The guy that's done the work. The guy that's full of the Spirit because he's done the work. Look, a man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. Are you a bold? Are you bold in judgment or are you a coward? When it comes to answering things about the Bible, are you bold or are you a coward? You're at war. Oh, we hear about this controversy. Oh, well, what about gay marriage? Are you bold to stand up and say, hey, thus saith the Lord? Yeah. Oh, well, that's not popular speech. I don't care what's popular. Right. This is what God says. I care what God says. Amen. And I'm going to let people know. Right. I'm going to be bold. But look, this is talking about somebody that becomes a wise man. It says that wisdom maketh his face to shine. It says that boldness in his face shall be changed. I believe as you acquire more wisdom out of the Bible from God, and you apply it in your life, and you do the right things, that God will use you. And when somebody looks at you, they can't explain it, but your face shines. Right? And I'm not talking about a miracle here. I'm talking about, for some reason, they're drawn to you. They're attracted to the fact that you have godly wisdom, and they want your advice. They want you to judge situations. That's the type of Christian we ought to be, where we're so spiritually smart that things of the world we can judge easily. We say, well, what's the Bible say? Yep. That ought to be your first response. Yeah. Look at the next verse. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment and that in regard to the oath of God. He's saying, I'm telling you, I'm giving you advice to obey the laws. right? To obey your boss. To obey your supervisor. Whatever it is in life. Whatever authority God's given you in life, He's saying, you need to start by obeying those that are physically over you. And this is a rebellion issue. Our nature is to rebel against authority. God wants us to submit to Him. And sometimes there's people over us that we submit to, and then God shows them the error of their way, and then they look at us as if we have some wisdom. Then they understand, why, wow, not only was He right, but He kept His mouth shut about it. And He still helped me finish the job or whatever. Look, he said, and He says, keep the King's commandment and that in regard to the oath of God. This is like Romans 13 where He says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Right? But He's saying... We're subject unto God, first and foremost. Yeah. I obey the government as long as they don't tell me to disobey God. Right. And it's the same thing we saw in 1 Peter 2 where he says, submit yourself to every ordinance of man. I obey the laws for the sake of my freedom, for the sake of... So that they, them out there can't point and say, oh, well, look at them. They don't do X, Y, and Z. Hey, I will obey every law that doesn't interfere with me obeying God. Right. If I obey God, I've just given you three verses that clearly state we need to obey the laws of the land. There's nothing wrong with that. It would do us all well to get a little bit of the rebellion out of our heart. And that's sort of like the first step toward obeying God. Look at verse number 3. Be not hasty to go out of his sight. He's talking about this king here. Stand not in an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever pleaseth him. So you shouldn't be standing with evil people. Somebody's doing sin, and you roll up on it, you need to keep on rolling. Right. Yeah, but those are my friends. I don't care. Do the righteous thing. Have some discernment. Don't rebel against God's commandment. Obey it and teach it. Look, he says, Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? You're going to go to the boss and say, Why would you paint the building green? What's he going to say? Take a hike, buddy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you start signing checks around here, you can pick the collar. Right? Look, whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Obey these basic things around us, but the first commandment is with it, in honor to God. He says for me to read the Bible. He says for me to learn the Bible. He says for me to teach the Bible. If you're rejecting these things and you're working on your own wisdom, yeah, but you don't understand. I've always had this spirit of discernment. I can figure things out on my own. You're a fool. That's right. You're a fool. And it's obvious to everybody but you. Be willing to look in the mirror of the Bible 
and say, Lord, show me my foolishness. Show me my faults. Show me my secret sins. I want to be stronger for you. Yes. Look at this last verse. Verse 6. Because to every purpose, there is time and judgment. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. Everything in this life, it can go back to time and judgment. Is the timing right? Are you judging right? And th these things are spiritually discerned. If you're only looking through fleshly eyes, then you're going to miss the opportunities God has for you. You're going to miss the, the point of, of it. You know. So what are you doing with your time? Are you in control of your time? Or is something else controlling you? Are you bold in judgment? Are you discerning what the right thing to do is and actually doing it? So, how do we get discernment? How do we have the wisdom to make the right judgment? We ask in prayer, expecting an answer. Hey, and then you got to pick up the answer book. That's right? Pick it up, read it, study it out. You know? I love getting questions about the Bible, but a lot of these questions you could probably answer for yourself. And I don't say this to discourage you. I don't. The Bible talks about meat and milk. And we're all at different places. And we shouldn't look down at somebody else that's recently saved. Well, you don't know that yet? <laughs> no. And that's why my sermon's a little bit of a, of a meat milkshake, right? It's like a steak smoothie, right? <laughs> we can all consume a little bit of it. We can all grow from a little bit of it. We can be reminded of the first principles. But really, if you would learn this one thing, how to teach yourself. Yes. How to grow in wisdom yourself. You say, well, you know what? I want to know more about wisdom. I'm going to do a word search. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Oh, I see a connection. I, it keeps putting understanding next to wisdom. What's understanding? Hey, it keeps putting knowledge next to understanding. God will take you down a trail. But he will guide you. He'll lead you into truth. So I would encourage you, learn to study your Bible. If you need help how to study your Bible, man, I would love to spend time with you showing you how to do it. It's, it's easier than you think, especially with the digital age. Especially with a concordance on a phone or just a, a basic word search. You can look topically and be, then begin to filter through verses and let God's Holy Spirit guide you into understanding His doctrine. So if you're not reading the answer book, you're going you're gonna to miss the point. We need to look for this knowledge and wisdom in God's Word. These spiritual gifts are given to all of us. And really, do you want more? I mean, what fool would say, nope, I'm good. I'm done. I've got two out of five. I've got two out of ten. I don't need any more. That's foolish. So what I'm saying is, for us all to be wise, we need to say, okay, I lack somewhere. Let me find it. What gift don't I have? What gift can I get stronger in? I want to accept this gift. God's handing it to you. You've got to reach out and get it though. It's up to you. You've got to do the work to learn. He's already handed it to you. Here it is. It's free. It's available. You probably have five copies in your house. What are you doing with it? Is it collecting dust? Again, Jesus warned, hey, you can discern the sky, but you can't discern the times. It's because of lack of spiritual discernment, a lack of knowing the Bible. Let's pray. Father God, thank You for Your Word. Lord, I just pray that You would help our church to spiritually grow and to get stronger and ready for the things that are before us, Lord. Lord, I pray that You would help some of these men in here to be able to, to just grow up spiritually and, and become great leaders for You one day, Lord. And Lord, the ladies, that they would stay strong and raise their families and the children, that they would understand that they have to seek for the Lord in the Word, that, they ha that the knowledge is available. But they have to do the work. They have to look for it. Lord, I love You. I thank You for this church. Lord, I ask that You would put a hedge of protection around it. And I ask that You would help to just increase us spiritually first and foremost. Help us to grow individually. And Lord, I pray You would continue to bring more babies and bring more families. Lord, we love You and we, th we thank You. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.